It's a known fact that gradients just make everything look a little cooler. In this video, we'll explore Affinity Designer's fill tool, AKA the gradient tool. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent and welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about the fill tool, which is this icon over here. It actually underwent something of a visual change in the, one of the recent Affinity Designer updates, but the behavior is still pretty similar. In the older versions, the icon looked a little different, so you might see that in older documentation, but this is what it looks like now. So right off the bat, before we go into too much detail, I just wanna say that the fill tool can actually work with the fill and the stroke of an object. So if I select my fill tool here, and I'm gonna give more details on this later, but let's say I, I have the fill selected up here. So if I fill the object, and I'll change the color just to make it look a little more interesting. So this is the fill having a gradient applied to it. I can also apply a gradient to the stroke. So you can see that the interior and the stroke can have a gradient applied to it. I'm mostly just gonna focus on the fill in this video, but just know that both are possible. Also, just a quick reminder that when you do something like this, when you create a new shape, it's going to remember what you did before. So let me create a triangle here, and it has the gradient of my previous object. Sometimes this can be annoying. Just remember that you can always click this revert defaults button up here to clear out something. So whenever you have a ton of styles on something and you wanna quickly just reset your next object, that's the button there that you can click. Okay, let's actually start looking at the types of gradients. And the first one we'll look at is linear. So I will apply that. So I have my fill tool here. And the reason I know it's linear is, well, first I have to select it. And context is fill. I'm gonna select linear gradient here. And you can see it automatically applied something. I'll make it go this way. And let's change it so, again, it's a little more obvious. Now, there's multiple ways you can edit a gradient. You can edit it on the object here itself with this widget, or you can go up here and click it to start doing the editing over here. For the time being, I'll edit in here. For example, if I wanted to add another color to this, I would just click on this line when I see the plus sign. And by default, it's just going to select the color that's already there, but I can move it around to something else. So let's do like this yellow. And you can also drag the colors around on this line here and they'll kind of snap to the middle. If you want to delete it, just press backspace and it goes away. Now the same functionality can be done up in this menu here. You can click on that and click this wheel and change it like that. Now one of the cool things about this tool here though, this widget on the object, is that it respects the magnetics function. So if I turn on the snapping tool here, if I drag this dot around, you can I can actually snap it to certain points. So if I want to go from corner to corner, I can have it snap like that. It's very useful if you want to like get it perfectly lined in the middle. So that's perfectly centered and I can do that. Or I can do, you know, from one edge to the other like so. So just like any other element in Affinity Designer, these color stops will snap to relevant positions. Now something we often want to do is reverse our gradient. So I can click this button up here and that just swaps the order of the coloring. We can also rotate the gradient by 90 degrees. So let me center it so this option will become obvious. Now this button here does rotate gradient. So I'll click it. What you can see is it's rotating our gradient 90 degrees. So this is pretty useful if you wanna just quickly shift the direction of your gradient. By the way, another thing you can do is if you have a color point selected, if you hold control and click, you can actually drag your gradient around like that. So maybe if it was like this, I could hold control, I can drag it around, kind of center it, position it how I want. And you know, if I didn't make the point already, you can drag these color stops different distances to stretch out your gradient more or compress it. So you can get a very compressed effect like that or a very stretched out effect by pulling it apart. But basically all these options I just explained, they apply to all the different gradient types. So as I go through and show you the other gradient types, just know that you can also do these things in there too. Let's look at radial and elliptical gradients. I'll select my gradient tool and instead of linear like I did last time, I'll select radial. You can get this kind of sunburst effect and let's make it actually look more like a sun. Let's get some red and orange going here. Let's bring it up. And all the normal options work on that. So I can reverse it. If you want to quickly reverse your gradients, I can add other points there. I can drag around to change the distribution however I want. Everything I showed you before works here as well. You can rotate, but with a symmetrical radial gradient, you're not going to see much of a difference. So it's all kind of the same. Let's look at the elliptical gradient now. I'll do this and I'll select elliptical. Now elliptical has two different control points on it. 
So you see these two sides that can be dragged independently, except at first they can't be dragged independently. You actually have to disable this locking here. Once you do that, you can actually create more of an oval shape like so. So once you get a proportion you like, you can then go and lock it and they'll, they'll stay in that ratio. But if you actually want to move them independently, be sure to uncheck the lock there. Next, we have the conical gradient, which kind of looks like a cone, hence the name. I find this one is kind of useful for uh, almost being like a color wheel. So you can do something like this on it if you wanted. Just create different color stops. So it can be pretty colorful. I don't use this one too much, but there are certainly use cases where someone might find it useful. Next, we have bitmap, which is a very useful tool. If you've seen my seamless pattern video, you know I like bitmap fills for putting in seamless patterns. So let's see how that works. I have the fill tool selected, I go to bitmap, and I'm gonna select this seamless pattern file I have. And this fills the whole thing, so you don't see the seamless pattern yet, but if you click and drag, you can change the scale of it. And holding shift will do 45 degree angles. So I can zoom in and you can see how it's actually tiling seamlessly. Now your graphic has to be designed specifically for this to work, but this is very useful for those types of patterns that do support seamless re repetition. With this tool, you have some other options up here. Mirror, I'll show that in a, I'll show that in a second. Repeat kind of just takes the edge and drags it out. So that could be, there are certain patterns where that is useful for them. Um, zero just does once. Let me show you what mirror does with actually a better graphic. Let's go here. And I'll select this arrow. This is just normal fill. If I do mirror, you can see I have my main arrow here and it's mirroring it upside down and sideways. So you see the red is on the right edge here. This one here, it's on the left edge. Let me do another example also. So this is the letter P, and if you mirror it, you can see more clearly how it's actually affecting. So this side is being opposite of that, and then this one below here is the mirror image of this one here. So you have kind of like this P, Q, B, D, which is kind of a common trick for just like making something repeat, but that's what the mirror option does if that's ever something you wanna look into. Now the fill tool works with text just as well as uh, multiple shapes. So if I have some text here selected, I can do a fill and let's find a more cool color combination. You can just drag across all your letters like that. Radial works, everything works. And you can also do fills across multiple objects. So let's do this. I can change how I want it to go across multiple objects. So the multiple object and text fills with gradients are something I do a lot of the time. Okay, now I want to look at shearing and scaling because I don't know if this is something you'll do a lot, but you'll see the UI act in a certain way and it might confuse you. So let's let's select something here. Let's do a gradient. Now you can see this widget looks like this. However, what happens is if I shear my object, so I'll just do this, and we'll do the shearing angle like so. If I go and I select my gradient fill again, you can see it looks like this now. So what's happening here is Affinity Designer, it's showing you how it's changing your gradient, how it's shifting it, because it assumes you're trying to do isometric perspective or something like that. In practice, I never really need this, but when I work with shapes and I'm changing them and rescaling them, sometimes you'll see this rectangle of gradient points and you'll kind of wonder what it means. It just means that you've had a gradient on a shape that you've changed. Now, note that there are four points, but you can't change these four points independently. It's still these two bottom points and these two top points are locked. So you can't actually have like four fill points, contrary to what it may look like. So I don't think you can add four different points here. It's still, this one on the right is still the same as on the left here. Now, if you want, you can just reapply your gradient by clicking and dragging, and it'll be a normal line again. Personally, I don't use this part too much. It doesn't really affect me, but you can just create your fill however you see fit. Again, if you wanna just reapply it. One last thing I wanna talk about is opacity with gradients. Now, there is a transparency tool. It behaves a little bit differently than a gradient with transparency, but let me show you that when you do a gradient, you can make one of the ends transparent. So I have this selected here, and there's two ways you can do it. I have this color point selected. I can drag the opacity down to nothing. I'll undo that. Or up here, you know, when I have it selected, you can take the opacity and put it down to zero. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna fade out. Now there's an important point here, and that is that I think sometimes people assume, well, if that last control point is transparent, it's not affecting the gradient, but actually it is affecting your gradient. Let me make a copy here. So you can see I have this blue color here. If I change it to something else, 
you can see my gradient is actually still getting affected. So even though it's fading out to nothing, that color still has an influence over the, over the way the gradient looks. So really this is just a quick tip to say that just because a gradient is fading to a transparent color point, that color point still influences the way the, the transition of the color is happening. Now one of the best ways to get gradients is to look them up online. A site I like is called uigradients.com. So let me open that site. If you go there, it'll do this kind of loading screen and it'll take you to some default random gradient, but you can click show all gradients over here and it'll give you a list. You can browse through it and let's, I don't know, let's find one that looks kind of interesting. And what I like to do is on my Windows machine, I like to actually take a screenshot. So I did Windows key shift S and I'll just like copy like this. And then back in my document here, what I'll do is I'll just paste it. And I find this to be a really easy way to quickly get colors from the, the web. So I have this default gradient, but let me add another one in. And when you want to get this gradient, I just select this point and I just color drop it from here. And I'll select one side and I'll select the other. I find that much faster than copying the hex codes. So I'll just do that. You can also search Google images for just cool gradients or interesting gradients, whatever kind of words you want to use. And there's lots of options here. Once again, you can kind of find ones you like and just take a screenshot and color pick it or something. So, you know, if you see something like this, you like, again, I'll just take a picture, bring it in. And this one has three control points. So I'll add a third one. So I'll say this there, set this middle one, set this last one. And there you go. And you can just get values like that very quick. So there's all sorts of resources online for finding cool gradients and colors. So that's the fill tool. That's where you go if you want to do gradients and fill in bitmap patterns. It works across letters and multiple shapes and it's quite flexible. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.